This is our attacks of Mars. You want to continue in our intelligent design series? The topic is uh, how does sap go from one end of the plant, the bottom end, to the top? Vice for going from the top to the bottom is a problem because you got gravity. But going from the root to the tip of the plant, that can be a problem. If uh, evolution was exactly what we're told it is, a series of accidents. Okay, so let's get started. First off, we're going to get a couple of terms out of the way. Very simple terms. Xylem, X-Y-L-E-M. Those are the veins that go through the plant and take sap up and phloem, P-H-L-O-E-M, are the veins that take it back down the roots. Uh, take nutrients down the roots for storage. Xylem and phloem. We're only going to talk about the xylem for the most part. Uh, now, you're told that all this stuff just evolved by a series of accidents, right? Well, let's look at that. You see, your xylem uh, carry nutrients up. But as we'll see, the processes aren't fully understood. That's an understatement. Now, this is a page on transpiration from the USGS. You see, when a plant takes in water and nutrients, it can go a little ways, a very short distance in the stem, due to a process known as capillary reaction. Capillary reaction is where the surface tension of water uh, causes it to tend to creep up a little bit. If you had a very thin straw that was clear you could see this, it would actually go above the surface of the water. What's never been explained is how uh, you get that potential energy from it, but that's another discussion for another time. So when it's climbing up the walls of the straw, it's getting a minute amount of potential energy. Probably something I don't know about that, but uh, at any rate, so the second force that's uh, in plants that we're concerned with is called transpiration. That's this page right here. So what is transpiration? Transpiration is where water is taken up. You have the sap in the stems, uh, roots, stems, whatnot, and transpiration causes evaporation from plant leaves. And that evaporation in turn causes a little bit of low pressure inside the leaf. So of course the sap is going to try to flow in the leaf to um, make up that gap and then of course leaf doesn't wither and die. But we have a number of problems. Well, who thought this one up? I mean, I think the plant just came up on it with this mechanism on its own. I don't think so. It was clearly designed like this. But we have another problem. See, transpiration can uh, account for a few inches of uh, sap flow. But after that, there's another force which science doesn't even understand. Now, if you talk to evolutionists about this, they'll say, oh yeah, we understand it. 
And they'll dance around it like they dance around the uh, swimming pool of pit vipers. I mean, they won't go actually go anywhere near it because they know this can't be explained. Because your average rose bush is much higher than uh, a few inches. There's a process there that no one really understands. Yet the plants have figured this out. With our marvelous science, we can't figure out how this works. You see what the problem is? Being given a bunch of BS by these people. You know, they're basically saying, yeah, everything involves a soul and accident, but they can't explain things like this. Well, having said that, this only gets worse. It doesn't get better. For the evolutionists. Now I'm going to preface this by saying this next part uh, deals with trees and here's where it gets really interesting. Uh, well I have to do a little uh, preliminary stuff first. Now, if you have a, an open pipe, there's no pump in the world that can raise a column of water more than about, it's right around 33 feet high. And the reason has to do with air pressure, you know, water gets heavy enough and the pressure at the bottom no longer greater than the pressure at the top so the water doesn't move. That's a fundamental principle of physics, right? You can find a better explanation for that if you look on line, but that's basics on it. No uh, pump, no single pump can raise a column of water in an open system higher than somewhere around 33 feet, give or take, depending on the outside air pressure at sea level. Right? So, we got ourselves a problem then. You see, trees, <laughs> in trees, water goes, sap goes a hell of a lot further. Water, sap, whatever, goes a hell of a lot further than 33 feet in many trees. Right? If you're counting a root system, it might travel hundreds of feet upwards. Which means the tree is doing something that it knows how to do and we can't figure out. And it doesn't even use a pump. Now, those of you who are paying attention here, should wake up to one little fact. The fact is, they don't know. Scientists don't know what this force is, or the other force I mentioned, that's above transpiration. They don't know how it works. Which means, every tree and bush out there is all outwitted as our best scientists. Well, you think? How can a plant along with a scientist? Well, it's very easy if it's designed by someone. You know, that's enough said. The point here is, someone had to have designed these things. God, aliens, I don't care. According to our physical principles, green plants on the surface can't do what they do. Kind of like what I used to think about uh, bumblebees. There was a time when it said bumblebees couldn't fly. Bumblebee didn't know that. So it just kept right on flying. All sorts of things like that. These plants and trees do things that we don't understand. That sap goes up to xylem. 
and there's forces there that we can't even comprehend. Yeah, we act like we know it all, and they just evolved. It's all a series of accidents. Case closed. You're an accident. There's no God. There's no aliens. There's just accidents all over the place. It's crazy, folks. And it's complete BS. Plants and critters do so many things that are so out of line of just evolution by accident, it's not funny. And it's time we uh, woke up and said, hey, you people are full of it. Not that I couldn't take, couldn't accept uh, slow change, but... I could, if they acknowledged there was some kind of guiding hand, because it's clear that we were designed. They just want to institute atheism because they want to control you. You know, modern science is all about atheism. Instituting atheism in the school, in the pop populations, so forth. That's about it for now. I want to fax Mars reminding you that your world was designed. I am not a Bible thumper, I'm an agnostic. Thank you for viewing.